to my brethren, let us read from the Old Testament, from the book of Joshua, chapter 1, and verse 1. <coughs> the book of Joshua, chapter 1, and verse 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. And as I said to Moses, from the wilderness in this Lebanon, Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, <coughs> for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. The time of the end of season has come for the people of Israel in the wilderness. In the wilderness, the people of Israel had amazing experiences with the presence of God, from the pleasant blessings of God, but also from the judgment of God upon whomever was a transgressor and disobedient to the word of God. But after the first few years, they saw that even though they were alone in the wilderness, the truth was that God was with them and for that reason there was safety in the wilderness throughout the whole the multitude of the people of Israel they lacked nothing God provided them with manna from heaven every day and they ate and were satisfied and every day Water poured out of the rock that followed them. In the wilderness, under absolute protection and security, with abundance of all the necessary goods so that they may live and continue in their course. With worries in the beginning, with fear in the beginning, <coughs> but afterward, they saw that God was glorious with them so that their anxiety left, their fear left, and they all enjoyed <coughs> their security and their course in the desert, alone. But God was with them. Now comes the great change. Now God led them after 40 years of, of walking, when everything had changed in the people of Israel, the unbelieving generation had passed away. The new generation, their children, that knew, that got to know God in the wilderness, in their walk, their faith was, in, faith was increased, not by the word of God, but with, by the things that they saw. They now found themselves standing outside of Canaan, 
just short before they passed the Jordan into a land which their father had promised, the God had promised to their father years ago and to them themselves just a few days back. But the, the unpleasant thing isn't that new things are beginning. The unpleasant thing is that the one that God had appointed as prophet among the people, Moses, got old and died. And now we'd say now they're alone without Moses, standing before a new situation of not of a course in the wilderness, but of mighty wars with mighty enemies. They had never again walked in this path. They had never again experienced such things. The only thing that they had to base themselves upon was the Word of God, the presence of God. No matter how much they believed, their heart would tremble. They could not return any longer. They couldn't stay in the wilderness forever. The only thing that they could do was go forward so that they may enjoy the promise of God by faith, the land that flows with milk and honey. And God, now knowing the fear and the hearts and the agony in the hearts of men, and the worry in the hearts of men for their today and especially for their tomorrow and the day after that, he now visits Joshua by telling him that, as you know, my servant Moses has passed away, so you now must rise up and pass over this Jordan and all this people with you to the land that I now, I now, not from now 10 years or 20 years to go, but now I am giving to my people. And this word now is very important. There is a now of man. There is a now of the wisdom of man, of the heart of man, of the vision of man. Which is exceedingly dangerous. And there is also the now that God refers to. And God's now comes from the visitation of God. Now. Now you may pass over the Jordan. For 40 years you couldn't. For 40 years, even you pa if you passed through, you wouldn't have good results. But now you must pass over the Jordan. Cross it. <clears throat> and know that I promise you, he says to Joshua and to the people, that every place that the sole of your foot would tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. Wherever you walk, it will be yours. Whatever you walk, the people of God will be yours. But now. But. He determines in detail the, the, the blessing in total. He says, the land that I will give you begins from the wilderness of Lebanon, reaches the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun, the Mediterranean. The land of promise was enormous, and I'm giving it all to you. And wherever the sole of your foot treads upon, it will be yours. So I give you the whole land, but only if you walk in this whole land. Now, and in all my blessing... And in all my promises, and all the land of promise. And this was very important because later on, when they had truly triumphed with the power of God, the people of Israel in the land of promise, they hadn't reached the outer limits. And that's why God told them, until when will you be lazy and not go on to conquer all the blessing? All the land of promise, now that is, it is given to you. So what do we see? What are we seeing now? 
Now there's worry and anxiety in the people of Israel and Joshua because he doesn't know what will happen tomorrow. Things are very difficult because there are mighty fortified cities, giants that are opposing them, and God tells them that you who have never learned how to fight <coughs> must enter, and wherever the sole of your feet will tread upon, I will give you. So, on one high side, there's the fear, the anxiety, and the terror. And on the other side, we have the promises and the instructions of God concerning the present time. God continues His promises. Joshua, he says, people of God know this, that no man, now this, that this time has arrived at last. Now that your life in the wilderness has come to an end, now that things are changing and new things I am bringing before you, promised to you before many years, and prophesied before the foundation of the world, prepared before the foundation of the world for now, for today. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life, which will be left for you. He's 80, Joshua is 85 years old. And as I was with Moses in the beginning, <coughs> we'd say with the first apostolic church in the beginning, so I will be with you, I will not leave you nor forsake you. These are the promises of God for His intention in regard to the people of Israel and the promises of God. But now, He refers to not what he will do what God will do with his people, but what God wants to do, but what God wants Joshua and his people to do, so that they may walk together, united and triumphant. I'm intending to do this, says God. I'll be with you. No man will be able to stand before you, and wherever the sole of your feet will tread upon, it will be yours. I'll be with you as I was with Moses. No obstacle will stand before you because I will go ahead of you with one condition that you mustn't tremble, mustn't fear. Be strong and courageous. For you, Joshua, will divide the land, an inheritance, the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Don't be afraid. You are the key of the whole story. I have prepared everything as long as you do not fear. As long as you do not lose your courage. I know that you're a man. But trust my word. If it is not you. If you are not truly steadfast and immovable in my word. I can't do any of the things that I promised you. So be strong and of good courage. <clears throat> For if you do not fear and are not a coward, then you will be careful to observe the word which I commanded my servant Moses, so that you do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, because then you will prosper wherever you go. Be careful because fear will make you come away from my word. Be careful because you, you must not fear with trust in God and hope in God so that you may be careful of my word and to do it completely to not go to the left or to the right. So the first key is Joshua. The second key is the word of God. If you do not fear and you care only of, about my word so that you may walk in my word completely and do not go to the, to the left or to the right and lose your sense of direction, then I, God, assure you that you will 
behave with pro- you will prosper because the word is my power and my wisdom and my understanding toward you and now in your daily life my dear brethren the word of god then was for him and for those people but today it's for us for you <clears throat> you are the key for the blessing of god in your piece of land and the key for you the key in the hands of god is you for you for your plot of land and the key in your hands is the word of god but exactly not a bit to the left nor a bit to the right but the word of god completely the written word of god not only will you hear it and read it but you'll walk in it and then wisdom and understanding given from above will be complete in you who is the key for god while your key is my word and concluding you must be careful in your personal life you must be careful in your daily life let this book of the law not depart from your mouth this is what you'll speak about because from the abundance of the heart speaks the mouth if you keep if your heart is full of my word then your mouth will speak forth only about my word and is the criteria so that we may know what we are keeping in our heart in other words if you want to learn of what things your heart is full of observe what things you talk about all the time if your heart is full of work you'll speak about work all the time if your heart is full of sin oh god forbid you'll speak about sin all the time if your heart is full of egoism and pride you'll always talk about your achievements if your heart is full of the word of god and it dwells richly which is a necessary thing in these latter days for the word of god to dwell richly then you'll only speak about the word of god it is a very good criteria so that we may see if our heart has stones have has rocks or if it's a good and prosperous land a good and yielding land so that the word of god may bear fruit secondly you m- and you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it so there are two things that you have to do in your daily life the word of god must be in your heart and you must study the word of god as something that you do more correctly <coughs> your love toward the word of god and you must tend to rightly divide and walk correctly in the word of god this is our life this ought to be our life this is the life that god wants to be wants us to have one question first do you love the word of god what do you love very much Do you love the word of God a lot? If you love the word of God a lot, then first of all you always speak about it. Secondly, if you love the word of God, secondly, not only will you only speak about the word of God, but if you love the word of God, then you will make sure to fulfill and execute this word. Then you will be prosperous in your way. Then in your way there will be the favor of God. No matter what you do, God will prosper it. No matter what you do, God will be with you. Secondly, you will behave with understanding. You'll know what to do and what not to do. You will know when to continue, when to go on and when to stop. You'll know what to say and what not to say. 
how to act in every place and time. And then, wherever the sole of your foot will tread upon shall be yours. And then, no man will be able to stand before you. And then, all the land of promise you shall enjoy and rejoice in it. Amen.